Hey there, my fellow intellectuals. How are you doing today? Kyle here with another video. And today, if you are watching this video on the day it was uploaded, you may recognize that the date is April 10th. And April 10th, believe it or not, is actually my birthday. Yeah, it is the day that I was born. And because it's my second birthday in quarantine because of the COVID-19 pandemic, I thought that I would do something fun this year. And by fun, I mean, I wanted to take a look at what the Hubble Space Telescope saw on my birthday, or one of my birthdays. For those of you who may not know, NASA has this feature on their website where they can actually pull up an image that the Hubble Space Telescope saw on your given birthday. And because of this, I wanted to take a look and see what it saw on my birthday. So let's take a quick look and see what birthday I share, or what picture shares my birthday, I should say. So let's go ahead, let's pick the month. Let's go to April. We know the date, it's gonna be the 10th. And we're gonna submit. And on April 10 in 1999, wow, okay, April 10, 1999, I was four years old <laughs> on this birthday. So, wow, all right, so quite a while ago. It's been 20, two years did i do that math 22 oh my goodness i feel kind of old <laughs> saying that 22 years ago but we're looking at the circinus galaxy wow so this is a nearby galaxy to the milky way if i'm not mistaken i think this is not maybe in the local group but it's a surrounding one of the galaxies surrounding the local group so let's take a look at it it's definitely a spiral galaxy as we can see here can i see the full image please wow that is beautiful oh my goodness Look at that magenta. It has a lot of gas here. Very cool. Lots of gas, probably a lot of star formation happening in these in these spiral arms here. So, resembling a swirling witch's cauldron of glowing vapors, the black hole powered core of the Circinus galaxy appears in this image. Much of the gas in the spiral galaxy's disk is concentrated in two rings. Let's take a look at more some, uh, more info, shall we? Ooh. Hubble Space Telescope taken with Wide Field Planetary Camera 2. Interesting. Let's read a little bit more down here. So it says, Resembling a swirling witch's cauldron of glowing vapors, the black hole-powered core of a nearby active galaxy appears in this colorful NASA Hubble Space Telescope image. The galaxy lies 13 million light years away in the southern constellation Circinus. Now, for someone like myself who does extragalactic astronomy, 13 million light years away actually isn't too far. <laughs> That, that sounds far, but 13 million light years compared to some of the stuff that I look at is, is actually quite small. But I shouldn't be too surprised because this is not too far from the local group. And this galaxy is designated a Type 2 Seifert, a class of mostly spiral galaxies that have compact centers and are believed to contain massive black holes. Seifert galaxies are themselves part of a larger class of objects called Active Galactic Nuclei, or AGN. AGN have the ability to remove gas from the centers of their galaxies by blowing it out into space at phenomenal speeds. Astronomers studying the source in this galaxy are seeing evidence of a powerful AGN at the center of this galaxy as well. So a Cefer 2 galaxy is a type of AGN, like it says here. And the thing between type 1 Cferts and type 2 Cferts is that type 1 Cferts have what are known as broad and narrow emission lines, whereas type 2 Cferts only have the narrow emission lines. So if we just go to Google here and I type in, let's just say Cefert two galaxy. I've definitely looked at this before. And we go down to this NED link here. Uh, this gives us figures of both a Seifert 1 and a Seifert 2. So here's a Seifert 1. This is NGC 5548. And these are emission lines that come from different elements that are in the gas that are being rotated at very high speeds. Now, this is what would be an example of a broad emission line. So the emission line or the emission is happening at a particular rest frequency in the rest frame of the gas, but because it's rotating really fast, like imagine you have this fidget spinner representing the AGN accretion disk and it's you know, rotating really fast like this, that emission line is gonna get broadened. So that's essentially what we call this feature here, this broadening of the emission line here. And the broadening is occurring, or it's broadened over, I think for, broad emission lines, it's like a thousand to like 5,000 kilometers per second over the range of the rest frequency. And then for narrow emission lines, like maybe these ones here, 
it'd be on the order of like 100 to 500 kilometers per second. I guess it could go up to 1,000, but I think 1,000 and up kilometers per second is what would be considered broad. Here's a picture of a Seifert 2, like the Circinus Galaxy. This is NGC 1667. Can't say numbers right now. But you can see here you only have these narrow emission lines here, mostly oxygen and some H-alpha and N2. So, yeah, th this is essentially the defining features of AGN, uh, or sorry, I should say Seiferts and Seifert Seaford 1s and Seaford 2s, sorry. And yeah, this is how you would study them. So very, very cool. I think at the, at the bottom here, they have a, a bit of a summary of all the different filters that were taken. These are all different camera filters with their central wavelengths on the Hubble Space Telescope. And this shows which colors correspond to which filters in the image. So very, very cool galaxy. I'm very happy that I share my birthday with such a very pretty image. But I cannot end this video without mentioning one other picture that I share my birthday with. And I've talked about this at length before, so I'm sorry if it's starting to get old, but it is my birthday, so I'm allowed to just do this. So for those of you who may not remember, two years ago on April 10th, 2019, this picture came out into existence. It was the first ever picture of a supermassive black hole in the galaxy of M87 has a six and a half billion solar mass black hole at its center. That's 6.5 billion times the mass of our sun. And this is one of the most well-studied galaxies out there in the universe. It's such a very interesting target. I made a video about this a couple of weeks ago talking about how there has been an updated image since this one that shows the polarization of light around this black hole and we're going to be able to study features of the accretion disk and the relativistic jet of this galaxy. But it is just an amazing time, amazing time to be an astronomer and having access to these photos and the equipment that we have nowadays to probe these targets. You know, as I turn 26 this year, I just want to take a moment to say thank you guys so much for all of your support throughout the past couple of years since I've been making YouTube videos. It's been an incredible experience so far. I have really enjoyed making content and talking about physics and astronomy and just whatever comes to my mind. And it's just an absolute pleasure to have you guys interact with the videos and comment on them and send me messages. And I really, really do love that part of the YouTube experience. So thank you guys. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I'm looking forward to another year of life and I hope that by the time I'm 27 I'll be able to celebrate my birthday with people in person and we'll be able to put the last year plus behind us and hopefully be in somewhat of a returned state of normalcy. So that's my hope. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, leave a comment below what your birthday image was with the Hubble Space Telescope. I would love to know what it was. And until next year, this is Kyle signing off on his birthday. Take it easy, everyone.